Good day, Strategy Gamers, and welcome to episode 40 of our Let's Play series of Stalingrad to Berlin scenario in War in the East 2. In this episode, we're going to be going through the air phase and first half of our ground combat phase for turn 21. And then in the next episode, uh, I've got a list of various things that we've had suggestions for in the comments section that we're going to go over as new mechanics, uh, time allotting. Uh, so look forward to that in the next episode. To begin, uh, we're going to go ahead and take a look at our weather report and see what the conditions look like. So we actually see that we're starting to, on the ground, get some mud-like conditions that are moving in, um, especially down here in the south near Rostov, Stalino, and the Crimea. So that's probably going to slow us down considerably in pushing in Crimea and give the Germans a bit of an advantage as we're slowly pushing through that mud. In the air, we see that for the most part, we continue to have just these cold skies, However, we have this heavy rain in the very north of our front. When we look at next turn, the forecast is heavy rain here for much and rain for the other half of the front. So in the next turn, we're actually going to go back probably and for air superiority and some others, uh, review those air doctrine uh, decisions on uh, what the minimum weather conditions are for sorties to fly. So for now, we're actually going to leave things exactly as they are, uh, where we have our recon with low intensity going on day two and six with minimum weather of poor. Ground support is active if we enable it during our ground combat phase. And then air superiority, we are running in all weather on all days. But next turn, we're going to go ahead and adjust that. So let's dive right in by clicking Execute Air Directives. And then this is going to go through and run all of the recon sorties that we have. Uh, normally, if we were doing ground attack or level bombers of infrastructure, etc., those would also fly during this phase. Uh, but since we just have the recon running, that's what we're going to see here on both day two and day six. We see that they actually flew some sorties to try to intercept us, and they had one operational loss. Whereas we have had 22 in total, two lost to flak. Day six here, we'll have our second round of recon flying. And then we'll close out the air execution phase. Okay. It's not too many losses. Pretty happy with how that went. Uh, and we're going to begin up near Leningrad. So it, what we saw during the Germans' ground attack phase was they only counterattacked in one location which I was so excited about. Uh, they only attacked us in one location, and that was down near Smolensk, which we'll get to a little later. Up near Leningrad, they did come back in, reoccupy this X. This has been a back and forth for quite some time now. But what's interesting is they actually pulled back some of their forces here, and our recon picked up where, they are, where they're at. So this is really good intel for us to have now, because one, it tells us where their HQ unit is, for probably this army up here that we're facing uh, on the west of the Leningrad front. But then we also see that they have some units back here. And this is important for us to know because if we were, if we didn't have recon and if we would have just taken the stack and moved them up, they then would have found themselves in a very difficult position from a defensive perspective of trying to hold that. So I'm really glad we had the recon running because now we have that intelligence of where exactly they have forces in the rear that can come up and counterattack. I think all we might do is look to see is if, again, we can push them out of this hex. Um, we're going to take off the fortress there. Is I, I really don't want them to dig in here. I want to leave this as an opportunity for us to push through in future turns. Although, as I say that, maybe we take these three hexes an attack here, 28 to 13, so that is 2 to 1. I'm a little tempted to do that. That rifle division needs some time there. And we do have some units up here. Yeah, so let's, um, let's take the 136 rifle division and move them up. 
And then let's see, these are all part of the 67th Army. Let's see for ground support units if we have any options here. So we've already got some anti-tank attached. We're going to attach this heavy tank regiment. And then we're going to look here at this guards rifle division. And we're going to attach this separate tank battalion. And for the rifle corps, We'll leave that. Let's see down here. 29th guards. We already have attachments. 128th though. Um, I think we'll leave it, but we'll yeah we'll attach the AA battalion. Okay. And I think for this particular one, we're going to turn ground support on. And yeah, if we attack with everything here, that gives us at least two to one. Let's give it a shot. All right, so we pushed them back successfully. And now I wonder if we bring up like that rifle division. Yeah, let's do that. And bring up the 127th. Ooh, you guys are a little high on fatigue though. Let's see here. I think we'll bring up the 46 rifle division. Oh, uh, that would exhaust you. So let's go over here to this side. Can we take the 29th guard? No, you can't make it. You can't make it either. Maybe the 256 here? I think we might do that. So that gives us a defensive value of 31, which should be more than enough to withstand any counterattack. And then I think we're still going to go here and see if we can't push these guys back. We still have three to one. All right. So they were pushed back. And we're going to make sure we turn ground support off again. So now we find ourselves in a pretty good position of where we've taken this hex. I feel like we're in a defensive position with it. Um, and then that means next turn if we can then move up here, put pressure on their HQ, etc., this might finally be our breakout from Leningrad. Although, as I've stressed throughout the series, moving south of Leningrad has never, and, and frankly will never be a priority, because the goal, right, the, the strategic objective, is for this pocket to push through Atritsa, Rezekny, and then all the way over here towards Riga, thus cutting off these Baltic states and all the forces that the Germans have here. That's the strategic objective. Um, it's not to push them back inch by inch from Leningrad, but we're keeping their forces entertained, right? Because the more we, the more we force them to, to reinforce this line, the less units they can bring south to defend Riga. So that's kind of the purpose here. We don't have any opportunities on this side of the front in terms of counterattack. We've been moving infantry divisions down here, and we can maybe look at, say, the 9th Panzer if we have an opportunity to attack here. So right now we're at 2 to 1. So that is quite tempting. Um, how else could we improve our odds there? Could maybe move one of you down. I think we might do that. So if we take the 18th Rifle Division and take you down here, that might be worth it. Let's do that. And then we're going to take the 115th and move you over here to help reinforce that hex. Then I'm also going to take these HQ units down south because really we have pushed ourselves south. And let's see if maybe we can attach a heavy tank regiment if we have it. Well, we can attach the 25th separate tank regiment, so let's do that. And then over here, let's see. Are you all part of the second shock army anyways? We'll do the separate tank battalion. Here is where I wish we had the um, heavy tank regiment to help because... That would do so well against a panzer division. 
but we'll we'll keep attaching some stuff here. Already have a tank brigade. Here we can attach another anti-tank regiment. And then here, I think we will attach AA. And because it's such an important target, I, I really want to put pressure on this 9th Panzer Division. I am going to turn ground support back on here for this offensive. We're going to go ahead and attack. Alright, we push them back and 67 armored fighting vehicles destroyed for them. That is way more important than even taking this hex. Right, so let's review that real quick in terms of the battle results. So the Germans lost. Oh, oh yes. Yes, look at this. They had 20 Tigers and we destroyed 10 and damaged 6 and disrupted 4. Heck yeah. That is wonderful to see. Absolutely wonderful. Uh, Panzer IVs, they didn't lose too many of... The bulk of their losses appear to be the Panzer threes, their lighter tanks. And then they lost almost all of their Martyr twos, a, a lighter SP gun. It, probably a good equivalent, I think, would be the Su-76 that the Soviets started to introduce at this time. Whereas our losses, the bulk of them came with these T-34s. But again, kind of two to one there in terms of armor losses. So very happy with that. And I'm glad we turned the air support on because although we did lose um, 30 airframes, uh, that really isn't that many <laughs> considering historical pass. And we pushed them out of a fortification level three hex. And for air losses, I just want to see. Yeah, so they lost three BF-109s and they were at skill 91. So it's not it's not like they were all complete aces, but that was pretty good nonetheless. Let's also look at for ground losses. I want to take a look at this. So it doesn't look like the air did too much other than disrupting a lot of their forces, right? So there was that. Let's see to, so like the Tigers, how effective were they? Those Tigers were very effective. So they had a total of 16 armor piercing hits, and 11 of them destroyed the target. Uh, so those were, those were very effective. And then from a range of 170, that makes it difficult then to, uh, to counter them, because for a lot of these, like the T-60s and 70s, they would have to pretty much surround the Tiger and, and try to get hits in from the side or the rear of the vehicle, because its frontal armor would be and its turret would be so advantageous against the smaller caliber of those light tanks. And you see that's kind of what happened here, right? So the range got so low on these light tanks for us. Uh, the stewards were a little surprising that they stayed so far out. The T-34 is engaging at 78 and 127 is good to see. All right. I, I love seeing that. That is a good result. And we're not going to move up into that hex. We're going to leave it be. Um, I think if anything, what we might do is look in the following turns to move south here to try to connect with these forces and, and push through, uh, because if we could get these three hexes attacking here, we might be able to break that unit, which then is going to open up a lot of possibilities for us. Looking down here in this pocket, you see they've actually started to retreat a little, and we're not going to, to take these fights right where they have like these defensive value of 19 and such. Um, but what we will do is where they have defensive value four, we'll probably attack. I don't think we have enough if we use even all three hexes to break through here. Yeah, we don't even have two to one. So I would be hesitant to attack that unit. So I think instead I'm going to attack their second Sturm Brigade here. And we're almost at three to one. I'm going to. No, I'm actually going to leave ground support on because they had those eight fighters defending that ninth Panzer division. I'm going to assume that their same air army equivalent that they have in this theater of operations is is the same there, and they're not going to have some influx of fighters to defend with. Okay, so that infantry committed to the defense, which is going to really help them, and they managed to hold. Um. And while they did not have a ton of fighters, they did have more this time, so maybe my hypothesis was incorrect there. 
So we reduced their fortification levels, but we were unable to break through. Now we're at a defensive value of 14, it looks like. Should still be enough to hold, though. Not worried about that. In the rear here, we have these rifle divisions. I want to see if... I think what we're going to do, you're all part of the 31st Army, and I think I had you back there on refit. I'm going to turn you into the 21st Rifle Corps. And we're going to get you up towards the front line to break through. And I think I'm going to bring you down here to continue the push on Peskov. And with that, I'm also going to make sure we get this rifle division headed south as well. Because I think it'll be more important to break out in this direction. And let's get you right up here, I think. And we'll take... You, you need to come off refit. Not reserve ready. Bring you here. We're not going to get too crazy aggressive with these moves up. Um, because they, they have some meaningful stacks down here. So we're going to take it a little easy. I think right here we might push up, though. Yeah, so let's take you move you here. Defensive value is still at 26, so we can hold out there. Then we're going to take... Which one do I want to take? Part of the 11th, 34th Army. I think the 3, 336 I want to... Uh, just trying to think about how best to do this. You're all part of the 31st Army. We're going to move you here, then this stack, we're also going to turn into a Rifle Corps. Yeah, your TOE, how much are you sitting? So I might actually have you go to refit before I have you push too far. Maybe. Maybe not. Now we're just going to go up with you. And we'll also take the 133rd Rifle Division up. Okay. Don't think we're going to move here yet. Because we're not, we're not going to break through in this hex. I want to break through over here, I think. So let's... Hmm... <laughs> This rifle core I might bring up here. And then we're going to take these two rifle divisions and move them up. So we have defense value of 20 versus their 43. So let's take this rifle core and attach to it some anti-tank elements. Okay, did that. And... Let's see now what we can attach here. Already have an anti-tank regiment, already have an anti-tank regiment, okay. Okay. like I should move you guys up. I think I'm going to. Yeah, we're going to push up. So that gives me eight. Move you there too. So that's 12, 18, 23. So about two to one again. So we're getting a little stretched. I think it'll be okay. Yeah, let's attach. I don't want to do a ski brigade. I'm going to do this 146 rifle brigade. 
and that brings me up to 14 defensive value. Back here, now we're going to move up this HQ unit. Move you up. Move you up. These rifle divisions we're going to leave on refit on that HQ. That's fine as is. Okay. So we are building up a big mass to try to push towards Peskov because, again, if we can take Peskov, their only route to retreat then is through here if we manage to continue pushing towards Riga, right? Um, yeah. Yeah, so we need to get to Peskov, I think. That'll put a lot of pressure on them and what they want to do. Over here, we don't have enough to break through in any of these hexes. Aside from we get down here and we do suddenly, we open ourselves up to potential counterattack, it looks like. Let's push, though, here, right, and try to open up the front a little. And I think I'm going to take the 23rd guards and see if they're enough to break through. I need to turn ground support off. We're going to take the whole stack, I think. Alright, so we got them to retreat. We're going to do the same thing here. Route at them. And then I'm going to take this entire stack. Thought it was going to move you up, but I guess you don't have enough to move up. So if I move you there, I'm actually going to just keep pushing, and then we capture the depot there. That was a little aggressive of me. <laughs> Just a little. But it kind of worked. So I guess I'll take it. Let's bring you back. Can I get the rifle core up there? I can get you there. I'm going to take you off refit now. Okay. I really need to get someone there. Shoot. Let's move you back one. Ah. Uh. Tempted. We're gonna do it. We're gonna move you up. And let's see what we can attach to you to try to help you. I think we're gonna attach... Tink Regiment, I think. Brings it up to three. So they would have three to one if they counterattacked here. I'm not sure they will, though. I, I'm betting they're gonna have something in reserve that they bring up to try to push us back. But now we've really challenged their position here and might have an opportunity to break north towards Peskov, honestly. But let's focus back on Adritsa, which has been the target all along. We don't have any opportunities here, which is fine, right? Adritsa is the target. This is just kind of that northern border. Down here, we're not going to break through. We do have enough to hold. Right, they have 37, we have 30, so we're fine there. Adrid said this was open last turn. We just didn't have enough movement to go take it, which is really unfortunate. If we took everything we had here, we're looking at 34 versus their 58 defense. We're not going to be able to break through. Um, I think what we have to do is look at pushing down to keep pushing back their line here, which they've already pulled back one, one row of hexes. Um, because right here I think we'd have an opportunity to attack. So we're going to take that 5th Rifle Corps and move you up. And then we will also take the 120th Rifle Division and move you up. 
So we have plenty in terms of defense there. Then I think we'll take this tank core. We're gonna have the tank core push through here four to one. They held, which is a little surprising. So now we take the tank core back because I just saw the tank core's uh, fatigue and it's scaring the crap out of me. So we're gonna let you rest on the front line a little. We'll move up this infantry division. And now let's just take the stack and attack. No, that's, that's overkill. We'll take the 120th and attack. All right, so they brought at that time. And I think we will bring up this whole stack to fill in this hole. But I don't think we're going to push any further this way. You're at 87 fatigue. My goodness, please go to reserve status. And the 33rd rifle division. I don't know if we're going to move you up anywhere. Could go here, but I don't know that I want to concentrate forces over here. I think the breakout opportunity is here in the south. Oh, they're doing a really good job because I'm so tempted to push south here when really I need, I need to head west. That's where I need to go. Um, I think I'm just going to move you south here. And then we have the second tank army. You are still recovering from fatigue, so I'm going to give you guys another turn to rest. I think that makes the most sense. Is that all of our second tank army units? I think it is. Okay. So the second tank army is going to continue to sit back here. I'm actually going to set them to reserve status. Just to help a little bit with the fatigue and combat prep. There we go. I think I've got all of them now. One more over here. The 16th Tank Corps. You, we will move up. And the 381st Rifle. We will also move you up. So then next turn, right, we might take, say, this stack, move it up, move this in to replace it, etc. It's going to be a little slow going. But really what we have to do is we have to eventually get to this hex to then surround them here. What if I took this entire hex and moved them down? Now we're going to wait, because you're at 50, you're also in low supply for so Yeah, we're just going to wait. That's fine. That is fine. Okay. Some of these HQs, though, we do need to move up, I think. Yeah, I think it makes sense to take this entire stack up here. So now everything is in range. Fourth guards, everything's still in range there. So then we get to this side. And... Question is, how much do we move all of you down? So let's just start by taking you there. Then we're going to take this stack and move you here. Here I think we might just reposition some of you. Right, like that. This rifle unit, we're going to move up here. Move the tank core up. I mean, we're just doing a little bit of containment, really. Yeah. 
So now anywhere they move here, they're going to be entering into our zone of control, which really depletes their movement. And you may remember that in the last episode, I think I kind of ended it when they did counterattack here, because this this is the only area, I think, where they had... Yeah, it is the only area where they had counterattacks all of last turn. I said to myself, and on the episode, you know, maybe we'll take this army we brought into reserve and actually use them to squash them. I absolutely took a step back, thought about it again, and said, no, that, that is a ridiculous thought. And, and here's why. This, let me go to the correct mode so I can show you, right? This is the 5th Guards Tank Army. It is mechanized and it is tank cores. Why the hell should I throw them into heavy woods and swamp with no rail or road supply as we approach our muddy season to counterattack this? Makes no sense at all. Absolutely none. Um, so we are going to continue to contain them and continue to get in behind them as we're already proving we're able to do. And we are going to take the 5th Guards tank army and move them exactly where we have always intended down towards Adritza, right? That's, that's what we're going to do. But before we do that, we're going to keep looking up here. And this stack, I think I'm going to move them here. Yeah. But we're not going to be able to push you guys up, I don't think. And that's fine, because your fatigue's actually sitting pretty high. So is yours, honestly. Um, do we maybe... Like, do I take the second rifle core and maybe try to push these guys back? What if I take the whole stack? I think I will try to push you back. Let's do it. Alright, so they route it. Kind of a questionable one I probably made in that decision, but I, I just want to keep putting pressure on their retreat. Um, even though now these guys are going to be in a tough position to push next turn, because you see, again, look at those fatigue levels that they now find themselves with. So let's see if we can't assign any support to just try to help, like, some AA. Um, because I'm assuming they will be under counterattack shortly. Nothing there. What does the fourth guards army have? No, so we're, we're going to leave it there. Up here we have this tank core. Maybe we move them down. I don't know what these two units are, though. Without knowing what they are, I don't want to. I think we will just move you to be ready to break through we have the opportunity. Okay. While we're up here, let's move our 5th Guards tank army. So these are two mechanized core. We're going to move up here. Then we have these two motorized brigades. actually going to build you up if I can, I think. I can't. Okay. So have you guys go this way. But I'm thinking use these two as kind of breakout units if we can get in and behind them. Move up the HQ unit. Here we will take you guys up there. And then you can all go here. All right. These are rifle brigades that we brought in in the last turn. And what we are going to do with all of you is mm -hmm. 
I might have you come and help here, actually, now that I think about it. Yeah, I think I'm gonna do that. I was thinking to have them be support units in the various armies, but I think I might actually use them to help just reinforce this line. We'll see. Re regardless if I change my mind, I can continue them marching west um, to become support units in these armies. So it's still an option. Now over here, we're not going to push on this column, I don't think, because I don't think we have enough force to actually do so. So we're just going to hold this entire line we have running our frontier. And then we see down in and around Smolensk, right where we have been trying so hard to try to push through. Actually, I want to see, are we at risk anywhere on the line of being counterattacked? I don't think so. I think we're looking pretty good. Right, we're trying to get around Smolensk um, so we can take all of this infrastructure here, which will be part of our Adritsa Smolensk are your um, logistics chain that we're trying to build out. But we are pushing south, and this was most successful, and I think we're going to keep doing that to try to come around them. And I think we're going to do the same thing we did in the previous uh, episode, where we start here to the east along our line and see where we have opportunity to push through. So let's start by seeing how we can get into this hex and move up and then put pressure on these units. And over here, honestly. So let's actually start over here, I think. So these two units, I think, can move up. And we're going to have them push here. Where we route at them. Good. Then we're going to take this stack and have them push here. And those two infantry division elements, they retreat it. We're going to take this stack over here. No, I said we we're going to start in the east and work our way west, but then we just kind of abandoned that. So now we're getting in and around the side here of Smolensk. And the big question now is how we can get up here and try to hold that hex. That's what comes next. So I think I'm going to take... I'm going to take these two units and actually turn them into a core. But maybe I need to change the army first. So let's get you to be part of the 41st army. Yeah, I think the 41st army. I'm going to take you here, 41st army. And let's now try to... Oh, can't do it. Okay, very well. We're going to move both of them up here. Right, defensive value of 8, so we need to continue to strengthen that. So where is going to be best to do that? What do we have over here? Let's take maybe the 247th and move you up. So now we're defense value 11 versus their 16. We should be fine. Let's move you up. Here we have the 7th Guards Rifle Corps. We're going to take you down here to the 8th Rifle Corps. And then let's push through here. 4 to 1. They retreat it. Good news. And then we're going to come down here. Third Guard Rifle Division. Right, and can we attack here? Not quite three to one, but we'll do it. They retreat it. 
Yep, so we've continued to push through. Now the good news is we are about to take, it looks like, um, Roslov, um, which is part of our chain of Aryol up to Smolensk, so that's good news. Right, this rail line is what we want. So Bryansk here, Smolensk, uh, Aryol, um, and then even all the way over here towards Sidritsa, so... We're getting there. We're making some good progress. Don't know if we're going to be able to get into this hex, though. That's one that's probably going to elude us, unless we brought the fifth guard mechanized up. They have a defensive value of seven, but they'd be then left rather alone. Well, let's do this. Let's move the mechanized unit here. And then let's take, like, this rifle division and move you down. And I've made a bit of a blunder, I feel. Yeah, this is gonna be tough. So now we have seven. What can we attach to you? Nothing there. Nothing there. You're part of the 33rd Army, too. Yeah, I probably shouldn't have done that. We've now opened ourselves up to a severe counterattack here between these two hexes. So that, that was an unfortunate mistake. Let's see if we can't take out some of that anger, though, and push back this unit here. See, there we go. That felt good, didn't it? Just relieving some of the pressure. Um, But in all seriousness, now I think it gives them something to think about of next turn, how open are they to counterattack from all three hexes. If they push us back, they help themselves in that situation, but maybe they won't be able to. I think we will take this rifle division and move them up. Here we have this rail repair unit. And it doesn't look like we're going to be able to Oh, yeah, we can get in. Well, yeah, we can't repair the rail because there's too many in this hex. So let's take this cavalry corp back out. Bring this unit down. Repair the rail. Repair the rail. Name of the game. Repair the rail. Okay. Hopefully they don't counterattack because we have a rail unit there. You see, now we've taken all of these. We're repairing them. Smolensk is one I keep missing. Shoot. Because they've had a full stack there all this time. So next turn we'll try to remember to, to move it back north to be able to repair that unit. Okay. Moving here a little further west. You see we might have some opportunity here. So like we'll probably have three to one here. Yeah. If Pulled back in some areas here. So we're going to push. Okay, so they retreat it. But we don't have enough anywhere over here. So we're going to have to hold. Yeah, at best we can muster here is 30 versus their 37. Looking down here. Kind of the same situation. But right here we have some areas where we can push. So I think we want to take these two stacks and attack. That's three to one. They retreat it. We're not gonna have enough for this hex this turn, I don't think. But we can take you guys and push here. That's three to one at least. The route at that infantry element. And now we can continue our march south. So let's take all of you going down south. And I th think we will do the same here with all three of you. And then we will press in the center where we have four to one. And they retreat it. Now up here, we'll take the 113th Guard Rifle Division and the 41st. You guys can come down here. You here. This is looking good. 
Okay. So let's see if we can't push back here. Three to one. They held. Shoot. Now we've left ourselves open to counterattack in this hex. Hmm. How do we want to deal with that? First, let me just see if I can get a quick victory there. I can't. Hmm. Do we have any rifle brigades to attach? Not with the third army. What about... Nope, nothing there. It's too late for us to pull back. We've exhausted movement points there. I could bring... 63rd Rifle Division over. So that doubles us up to 6. Now we're looking at 17 to 6. Alright, so let... That's an anti-tank regiment. Let's attach what we can. Get some AA in there. And then we will... Mm, I'm tempted on the Heavy Guards Tank Regiment. Against all infantry, I just feel like it might work. But I worry about losing the regiment to a division that may be in trouble anyways because they're at 75 fatigue. We're going to attach it and see what happens. So that brings us up to 7. So they have 2 to 1, but that's it. Okay. Yeah, it didn't go as planned there. I should have been a little slower and a little more thoughtful in what I was doing. I think um, our Yule here is an area where we do need to get... Well, no, actually the HQ units are doing a great job here at the rail repair because we have them so focused. So that's, that's actually some good news. I'm going to move up that HQ1X. Let's see, actually, we're... We don't have a depot in a rail yet because of the rail. Um, so I think I'm going to leave them. Yeah, I'm going to leave them on the depot for one more turn at least. Because right now that's how all these units are getting supplied. So that's good. Over here, they have the Totenkopf Festus Panzer Grenadier Division. We haven't seen them in a while. Um, and they... They could maybe press through here. So I'm debating if I pull back on this side at all. I think I might. I think I might take you there, you there, you there. Just to try to avoid the possibility of getting outmaneuvered here. I'm going to take these two units back one. Because I'm... This is where we just have to remember this is a balancing act, right? Of We're having great success pushing through here and putting serious pressure on Kursk, where it also looks like they've brought up two panzer divisions, right, to try to reinforce this. Um, but over here, we're not the strongest, so why, why throw ourselves at an SS Panzer Grenadier Division? There's no reason to. So we're just going to pull back some of those units and, and hold this defensive line, which is fine. Nothing wrong with that. Up here we have some rifle divisions on the tank core. They're currently being refit. I think the rifle division's probably in a good enough state that we can move you up. And we'll take you here. Okay. And the tank core, let's see how you're doing. You are good. So you can come up and help there. Okay, that's something. Looking a little to the south here as we press on Kursk, I think we could make a play to push back this mountain division. And I think we will. So let's go ahead and attack there, three to one. They retreat it. Over here, we can make a play as well against this motorized division. 
That time they routed, so that's great news. And then I think we might just take you to move you up. Trish trying to build out this front line a little. Down here, we're going to move all of you guys up. And can we push through? It's only two to one. I th think what we will do is take you here and let's have you push there. They retreat it. Let's have them push here. They route it. And then we're going to bring up this rifle division to reinforce that hex. Down here, we're going to move up. And move up here. Let's break through right in these areas where we can. They held? Did I like misread a number there? I thought we had like 7 to 1. I guess we did not. Okay, let's take this rifle core and attack with you. Okay, that time they routed. I may have mixed up the defensive value there. Maybe that's what happened. Here we're going to move this stack down. And we will have you attack. I'm going to turn ground support on to maybe help with this one. And they retreat it. Heavy losses in the air though. Heavy losses. Turn ground support back off. Take this stack, push here. Okay. I'm going to move you down here. And this stack, we will move here. Okay, look at this progress. And this is going to be another great rail line to have as a connection to get supplies down on. But we do need to get it repaired, which that, that unit's working on. Let's see. I think we'll go just a little further down the line. What can we do in this pocket? Here we have 11 to 6, so that's an option to push them back. But I don't know that it's going to be worth it. Because right now, we're actually a little open to counterattack if we press too far. I think the best we're going to do is let's put pressure over here. And we route at that Romanian infantry division. And try to get them pushed back a little. Here we have the 6th Army, which has been on refit for quite some time now. And they're still going to be on refit, but they're getting better. Right? Some of those rifle divisions are looking much better. Here they have the LAH SS Panzer Grenadier Division. And what's interesting about that is, you may recall from the previous episode, they were down south here near Stolino, and we actually pulled back because we were so fearful of a strong counterattack from that Panzer Grenadier Division. Now they've reallocated up here to the north. So I think that means we might have some areas of opportunity to push along the front here in the next episode. And we're doing pretty good on time, so I think I'm going to close it out here. And this should give us then enough time in the next episode to discuss some of those new mechanics that were mentioned in comments from some of the previous videos that I really want to get to because they're, they're great feedback for my gameplay and to try to help newer players who are learning this. Um, so we're going to go over those in episode 41. We're going to call it here. Thank you so much, everyone, for watching the video and the series and your continued support. Should you have any questions, feedback, or any general commentary, please leave it in the comments section. I'll do my best to get back to you. Um, and with that, Strategy Gamers, hoping you have yourselves a great day. Bye now.